Beverly Drive. And Beverly Drive, a famous corner in the heart of Beverly Hills. And a famous young man who has proved again that women love a heel on the screen. This is Kirk Douglas, Hollywood's great new star, as you did not see him in the motion picture champion. This is Kirk Douglas, as he is, a nice guy. In the picture champion, Kirk played a prize fighter who broke the hearts of three young ladies. As a guest later on Eddie Cantor's radio program, Eddie berated Kirk for treating the girls like dogs. Women, said Eddie, don't like that. And just then, Dinah Shore walked up to Kirk, handed him a leash, and purred, here's my leash, Kirk, take me for a walk. But today it's a drive to a drive-in hamburger stand where a lot of movie stars like to have lunch. Car hop Willie Shaw doesn't swoon at the sight of Kirk. No, sir, she's accustomed to movie stars. She brings the menu and takes Kirk's order, a hamburger and the malt. Big things have happened to Kirk since his success in the film Champion. He's a leading contender for an Oscar. He just starred in another film, Young Man with a Horn, and has a seven-year contract at Warner Brothers good for exactly one million dollars. Yes, a real Hollywood success story. Just a few years ago, Kirk was a waiter at Schraps in New York, working his way through dramatic school. He played a few small roles in Broadway plays, then came to Hollywood. Hollywood cast him as the weak neurotic type until producer Stan Kramer gave him his chance in Champion. Director Elliot Nugent stops to say hello. Kirk knows everyone in Hollywood now. You know, there have been stories that Kirk has changed since his stardom. Actually, Kirk says he hasn't changed at all. He told me I'm keeping my mouth shut and not letting the people know how lucky I was. The only thing that has changed is Hollywood's attitude toward me. Changing that attitude found Kirk fighting harder than he did in the picture. He had to fight with his agents who didn't want him to play the part but he took it against their advice. Now Kirk is the champion even to the kids. Kirk has been spotted in the drive-in by a young fan, Dickie Bellis. Dickie wants Kirk's autograph. Sure, Dickie. Speaking of Kirk's success, I'll never forget his own crack after the first preview of Champion. Said Kirk, I'm a success. I finally arrived. My agent talked to me this morning. And Dickie gets something he didn't expect, a baseball bat. Nice guy, this Kirk Douglas. A star with tremendous appeal to the whole family. A regular guy who is still surprised at his sudden success in this place called Hollywood. He says, I guess I was just lucky. A movie queen makes a screen comeback at the age of 23. Yes, it's beautiful Dolores Moran who has packed in her few brief years more excitement and activity than most people have in an entire lifetime. This is Dolores at home, the home to which she retired from the screen two years ago to become a mother. And here's her son, 18-month-old Brett. Papa is movie producer Ben Boges. Now Dolores is coming back to the screen in the best and most unusual role of her career. It's the role of Lily White, the burlesque queen, in the film version of Damon Runyon's famous story, Johnny One-Eye. Dolores Moran is one of those fair creatures, a native Californian. Her hometown is Stockton, but she lived most of her life in Sacramento. One day at the age of 15, she went on her first date with a boy. The date was for a visit to the Elks picnic. There was a talent scout there from Warner Brothers Studio. The girl with the curves as effective as Bob Feller's impressed him. The next morning, Dolores, her father, and the talent scout boarded a train for Hollywood. Dolores was given a screen test and signed to a contract. Yes, Hollywood moves fast when it discovers a combination of ability, beauty, and brains. Dolores made her film debut in a brief role in Yankee Doodle Dandy. Then came starring parts in The Horn Blows at Midnight, To Have and Have Not, Hollywood Canteen, and Too Young to Know. In 1942, Dolores and producer Bogus were married. Then she retired to become a mother. Yes, Dolores Moran is eye-stopping proof that motherhood needn't have an ill effect on a woman's figure. Her measurements are the same breathtaking figures they were when she was 16. And now that she's out of retirement, there will be other big roles. Producer Bogus already is making plans to star her in Louis Brownfield's hit novel, 
early autumn. The famous Hollywood restaurant in the shape of a hat, the Brown Derby, and a premiere opening for a cookbook. Brown Derby owner Bob Cobb and actress Christine Miller join the celebration by trying a new recipe from the Brown Derby cookbook just published by Doubleday, a recipe that's gone Hollywood. It's flaming cabbage, or should we say, giving a cabbage a hot foot. Here's the recipe. Scoop out a cabbage, put it in a compote, heap ice cubes all around, and then decorate with uncooked hors d'oeuvres on toothpicks. Then, for the flaming part, canned heat hidden inside the hole you scooped out of the cabbage. Light the canned heat, and your guests can cook their own hors d'oeuvres just like roasting hot dogs. This is called roughing it in Hollywood. There's no argument, though, about the results. Bob and Christine agree it's a tasty dish. Christine is quite a dish, too, and she likes this latest trick in entertaining. I like Christine in such films as Too Late for Tears and I Walk Alone. But how about it? Christine says she can cook, too. Okay, says Bob, you take over. After all, there's more than one recipe in this Brown Derby cookbook, and Bob is the fellow who has dreamed up many of them during his 23 years as head of the famous restaurant. The first Brown Derby was just a glorified hamburger stand on Wilshire Boulevard. Now there are four Brown Derby restaurants in Hollywood and cocktail parties for cookbooks with flaming cabbages and pretty girls. Yes, even food goes glamorous in a village called Hollywood. Yes, hosiery is the big Hollywood fashion news this week. The doggondest hosiery you ever saw. Stockings under glass at $1,400 a pair, fashioned for movie queens by Willis of Hollywood. Willis DeMond, that is. That's Willis and two of his models, Pat Ray and Sandra DeMond. These are stockings with glamour at fabulous prices, which are locked up every night in a safe. Stockings of fine lace trimmed with beads. Stockings decorated with sequins and pearls. Full-length opera hose worn by June Haver, Betty Grable, Lana Turner, and just about every glamour doll in Hollywood. Hosiery has been Willis's business for years, and brother, he really knows those curves. A pair of hosiery designed by Willis went to Princess Elizabeth for her wedding, for Rita Hayworth's trousseau, for June Haver's role of the famous dancing star in the life of Marilyn Miller. These are stockings with glamour. No wonder he keeps them under glass. At $1,400 a pair, even a run can be a major catastrophe. And how do you like this model? Pearls in a beautiful design to enhance my lady's legs. These sell for $1,200 a pair and were worn by Betty Grable in a recent film musical. Sandra is modeling them here in television's first visit to the Hollywood Hosiery Salon of Willis of Hollywood. We promise to let him put them back in his safe right after this shot. Ah, two beautiful girls and four beautiful legs. But what's this? Please, lady, Pat, that's your name, Pat Ray. We, oh, oh, I see, a secret hiding place for taxi fare built right into the hose rate. I get it, another creation by Willis of Hollywood. Say, this is fun, quick, Watson, a little closer, let's see this again. The money, <whistles> unzip, deposit the money, zip again, and any girl can be ready for any emergency. Willis, you're a devil. Hosiery with glamour at four figures, so when you see two young ladies walking down Hollywood Boulevard like this, and when they stop like this, and when this happens, well, you can understand their pride in wearing hosiery designed by this fellow Willis. This is hosiery to be seen, not hidden by California's smog. Samuel Goldwyn Studios, property department. That means Irving Sindler and his fabulous trailer. This is Irving, 25 years of veteran prop man. Behind the scenes again, and I'll let you in on another movie secret. Did you ever wonder why ice cream cones don't melt under Hollywood's hot studio lights or the California sun? How Ann Blythe, for example, can hold the same ice cream cone all day during scenes for the Goldwyn picture with all my love? It's easy, really, if you know the secret. Irving Sindler knows the secret. Just ordinary mashed potatoes, just like Mother used to make. 
whip to the right consistency, get those little bumps out, and in just a second we'll have an ice cream cone guaranteed not to melt. Now watch this, the mashed potatoes are ready. The cone and the ice cream scoop. Presto, no deep freeze needed for this ice cream cone. This won't melt even in Lana Turner's boudoir. Good too, after all, what's wrong with mashed potatoes? Hollywood Reel for now. Until next week, same time, same channel, this is Erskine Johnson saying so long from the glamour capital of the world.